Hi, welcome to another edition of American Sailing Sailor of the Month, where we love to bring you stories from sailors around the world who can inspire us all. This month we bring you Gabrielle Grant. She's our January Sailor of the Month, and she is 18 years old and hails from Manhattan Yacht Club. She loves to sail New York Harbor and has so much to share about her journey of seven years as becoming a sailor. Congratulations, Gabrielle, and we're excited to introduce you. Welcome, Gabby. Thanks for joining us. Uh, congratulations on your winning the January American Sailing Sailor of the Month. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we're excited to talk with you. So um, tell our audience how long you've been sailing. Yeah, so um, I've been sailing for about seven years now. Um, and I started sailing when I was 11. Oh, very cool. So you're definitely on the younger side of our audience and you kind of have a really cool story about how you got into sailing. You want to share a little bit about that for us? Yeah, sure. So um, my parents actually got me into sailing. So my dad was um, a ship's captain a few decades before I was born. So um, from a very young age, being comfortable around the water and uh, enjoying water sports has been something that's been encouraged um, and kind of emphasized. So I was in swim team when I was younger and my parents were kind of getting ready to like introduce me into sailing. And when I was 11 years old, um, I, my parents signed me up for the um, Manhattan Yacht Club's Opti sailing program. So uh, through there, I was able to get my first taste in sailing um, by uh, sailing Opti's. And then from there, I kind of expanded and I really fell in love with the sport like the first week I started. So very yeah. cool. So I noticed you also have done some racing on J boats. Um, you want to talk about your experience with that? Yeah. So um, I, this past summer, I was able to sail in Manhattan Yacht Club's um, all adult women's uh, championship regatta, which was very exciting because um, not only was it my first time kind of sailing in a competitive event, um, and like kind of not like leisurely competition, but uh, <laughs> I was able to sail with adults, which at the time I was 17. So it was a little bit daunting at first, but it kind of allowed me to get a feel for how competitive sailing was. And that was kind of a solidifier for me that like this was a sport that I really enjoyed because I've always experienced sailing from the more leisurely side. So to be able to experience it in a competitive setting as well was something that um, I really enjoyed and that um, that kind of allowed me to realize this is something I wanted to continue. So you would probably describe yourself as both a racer and a cruiser then you like the leisure and exactly yeah I would. Yeah very cool on the j-boat in that race where did they have you on the boat what were you working? Yeah I was working the mast position nice. so um, I was kind of doing everything that you would do there and I was also helping um with the bow position and switching the spinnaker pole which is a little bit of a feat for the first time but um it was very exciting for sure was the boat all women or um yes it was all women so yeah very cool. very exciting. That's awesome um what would you say in both racing and cruising I think you've just told me you're racing one so what is your most memorable sailing experience yeah, I would say um, I have a lot of very um, exciting and memorable sailing experiences, but one that comes to mind uh, was when my first year sailing J uh, J24s, um, and I was 13 years old, and it was we had been sailing for the whole week, and um, on that Friday, we had decided that we were going to do a full day sail from in front of the Freedom Tower all the way to the George Washington Bridge and back, so uh, we kind of got all of our food ready, and we put it in the boat. And we started sailing at around like 10.30 a.m. And uh, right away, we kind of started talking about school and about our past sailing experiences. And our instructor was um, actually from Ireland. So we were able to get some of his experience as well um, sailing in Europe. And he talked about, you know, how it was going to school there and coming to the U.S. to teach sailing and kind of get more experience here as well. So we talked about that for about an hour. And then um, as we do, like with a lot of like the J24 like classes and all of that, we uh, were able to take turns steering and um, nice. skipping. So we uh, kind of took turns doing that. And at in the Hudson River, you know, it's very crowded um, and there's a lot of ferries. So there are a lot of lessons to be learned about 
being aware and making sure that you know the rules uh, regarding right of way as well. Um, so we did that for like about an hour or two. And then um, we kind of got closer to the bridge and everyone started getting excited. And we were um, also sailing with a, another J24 boat. So we kind of decided to make it a race to see like mm -hmm. who could get there first and who could come back first. So um, we got there and it was really exciting because it was the first time I had sailed like underneath the bridge. And uh, I make the commute to New York every day for school. So being able to see like what I would see normally from the bridge and kind of nice. look from below and see what it was like was very exciting for me. Um, so we spent a little bit of time underneath the bridge uh, talking and looking at like the different current patterns and all of that. And then um, on our way back, we kind of decided to focus more on the race. So there was a lot of um, bantering going on, which was very funny um, and made it more of like a comedic uh, competition type atmosphere, which I, I thought was very fun. And then we got closer and we had kind of this happens a lot with um, us like trying to get, have fun on the boat, but we brought a lot of like water balloons onto the boat and <laughs> we kind of hid, yeah, so we kind of hid them in the cabin. And when we thought the time was right, we brought them up and we decided to just like start throwing water balloons at the other boat. Nice. So uh, we, you know, tried to aim correctly and get like close enough to like try and hit their cockpit. It didn't work most of the time, but we did get a few direct hits. So uh, that was pretty fun. But uh, after that, we kind of spent time uh, like enjoying the rest of the sail back and we did end up winning. So that's a little bit of a, a bragging point there. But um, for the most part, <laughs> yeah. so um, it was very fun. And um, it's something that I've been able to do in the years since. And uh, every single time, it's a great experience to be able to have like those long sails with people that I might not have met before. Do you guys, have you created a tradition of it? Like, is it the same people? Um, a lot of people come back like several mm -hmm. years. Sometimes they do it like different weeks, but um, for the most part, I've seen like a lot of kids that I've been sailing with since I was like 12, which I think is very exciting that like people want to come back and um, have uh, new memories to experience with everyone. Um, but yeah, we definitely make it a habit of like sailing at least to like the George Washington Bridge or the Verrazano um, every week. So um, the Verrazano is a little bit closer. It only takes like an hour and a half or two hours to get there and come back. But um, yeah, it's always very fun. That's so cool. What a what a gift to be able to live there and uh, do that same stretch all the time. That's really cool. Yeah. I imagine you've learned a lot of sailing lessons along the way, especially with stopping and looking at current patterns and things. So, yeah. and you can never get enough practice with the right of way rules. That's incredibly important. The barge isn't yeah. moving for you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, so with that, what ASA certifications do you hold and what do you envision yourself pursuing going forward? Yeah, so um, I currently hold the 101 and 103. So um, I did my basic keelboat standard sailing certification um, when I was 13 in my first year of sailing J24s. Mm -hmm. um, and this past summer, I did the um, the yeah basic coastal cruising uh, certification. And um, that was very fun because mm -hmm. we got to start um, in the like where we normally sail. And then we kind of sailed past the Verrazano into um, the ocean a little bit, which I didn't realize it was so close to where we were sailing. I was like, oh, wow. Like there was a complete difference in like the currents and like how large the waves were like not even two hours into our sail. So that yeah. was very exciting. Um, but in the future, I've been looking at uh, doing the uh, bare boat, um, so like cruising certification and also the um, celestial navigation one was very intriguing yeah. to me. Very so, cool. Yeah. Do you have destinations in mind for those or are you going to just stick close to home? Um, I actually haven't decided yet. I might do like one abroad. It depends on how my summer looks. But um, if not, you know, I always have the New York area, which is always a fun time. So yeah, plenty of challenges right there with you. That's cool. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Um, what's your favorite aspect of kind of aligning your sailing life with your membership with American Sailing? 
Yeah, I would say like the main, I mean, my favorite aspect of that is kind of like being able to bond with people over like common interest. Um, of course, like sailing, but um, I remember when I was taking the um, Kibbo standard sailing test, um, I was able to do that with a lot of the kids that I was sailing with. And so being able to spend time on the boat with each other and being able to kind of study and ask each other questions and like quiz each other a little bit, but also using that as a way of getting better was something that I always thought was special about um, being able to kind of work in tandem with like the ASA to like improve. So um, that was something that I always enjoyed um, and that I'll continue to enjoy as I progress as a sailor. Very cool. It sounds like you have kind of a community around you that speaks the same language and has had some of the same experiences. How many yeah. um, how many so, like kids would you say you associate with that are sailors as well? Um, I would say like on, on average, most of the time, like we sail with uh, like on each boat, we'll sail with like about six other kids or like five. But um, throughout like my time sailing, I've had like about 15 kids that, you know, have continued coming back and that I've been able to talk about like experiences that we had when we were 11 and like 13 okay. that, you know, we can kind of bond, laugh about and kind of use as reference for current um, experiences. So awesome. Yeah, it's uh, inspiring to me at our yacht club here in Austin, just to see some of the members who have been sailing together for decades. So I can only wish that for you with your friends, because it's a beautiful thing when you live life and you've got some people in your life that are just kind of staples. They've been there forever and they always will be. So I really, I wish that for you that they will kind of continue sailing with you along the way. Um, why would you say that people should become a member of American Sailing? Um, I would say people should become a member of American Sailing. Basically, for like the reasons that, you know, I've experienced, um, mm -hmm. I know there is a lot of kids um, that I associate with in high school that whenever they hear the word sailing or they hear from a friend that I sail, they always come and ask me questions and they're like, oh, how did you get into this? Um, is there a way that we can incorporate this into our community? So I've always found that like being able to associate with American sailing and kind of use that as a measure of like improvement and use that as like kind of um, being able to set goals for myself and being able to uh, like use that as a measurement for like my like completing those goals mm -hmm. I would say like that's kind of a great like reason for other people to kind of join American Sailing and use that to their advantage um because it's a great opportunity and it allows everyone to kind of work together while still uh, focusing on like personal um improvement which is always great that's cool. That's so good to hear. Yeah, it's like almost turning what somewhat can feel like an individual pursuit into when you're on a boat in a crew, you definitely know it's a team sport, but exactly. Yeah. Kind of nice to be able to also have the ability to go off and solo sail if you've got a small craft or something like that. So it's it's a versatile yeah. sport and nice to do it both ways. So is there anything else that you want to share with our American sailing community and uh tell everybody? Um, well, I guess I would say, you know, if you are thinking about uh, improving your sailing ability or uh, trying something new, whether it's sailing um, on a new boat for the first time or uh, inviting a friend to come and sail with you, or if you haven't sailed before, even, you know, getting involved with a sailing club, I would say just go for it. I mean, it's probably one of most rewarding thing that I've done in my life so far. I know I'm only 18, but you know, it's something that I can see myself doing like decades into the future and still enjoying it as much as I do now, if not more. So it's never too late to start. Um, and I would just say, you know, be confident in that and be able to kind of use that as a uh, propeller for success. So very cool. Well, thank you, Gabrielle. Appreciate you sharing your story and um, cheers to you and your future in sailing. Thank you. That's a wrap. Thanks, Gabrielle, for sharing your story with us. If you have a story you'd like to tell, we'd love to hear it. Hit us up at asa.com slash sailor in the one.